All right, in this lesson, we're going to look at the draw loop. The draw loop is uh, foundational for creating animations. So uh, we're going to make an animation, which is just a series of frames that we draw one after another uh, to, to mimic movement. So the draw loop has um, this. It's a function, and when you pull it in, it creates a loop. So when it gets to the end, it goes back to the top and enters the loop again. This is going to draw an ellipse uh, randomly around the screen and fill it with green. So the ellipse is random x, random y, but it's a circle because the next two parameters are default to the radius and the or the width and the height. It just kind of fills the screen there. So if you want it to look like a flip book where it changes, we have to redraw the background every time um, in that. So if you notice here, there's a background that's been refreshed as well as drawing the sprite. This one we needed to add um, an orange circle to be uh, created with the green one. So the green one first, then the orange, and then we create this green and orange speckled um, picture here, similar to this. Uh, this one again because we're refreshing the background now we have this randomly placed yellow dot that gets bounced around um, this one we have a background we now are randomly putting our sprite it's going to be a green alien um, between 200 and 220 in the X direction. So he's going to bounce back and forth. And these are some other properties that we can manipulate from our sprite. We have the X and Y coordinates. We have its rotation value. We have the scale, which is um, how big or small it is. And then if it's visible or invisible. So in this one, we want to shake the uh, brush just like the pencil is shaking. So this one was shaking over here between 100 and 110. So we're going to do the same thing over here, which would be around 300 to 310. So if you look at my brush.x right here, I add that um, this random number generator between 300 and 310 to the x value. Now, just to show you that if this background is not placed inside the, the draw loop, it makes this... It just draws on top of each other. So you just have this mess of, um, you know, it doesn't really, it, it's, it looks like it's moving, but it, you've got this streak, um, you know, behind it. So anytime you're doing animation, you've got to reset the background. So if your background is complex, you're going to have that reset background all through it. So it might not just be a white background. It might be a scene. So you'd have to redraw the entire scene each time uh, for the animation. So later on, we're going to learn how to do a function, and we'll just create a background function that we can call, and it will do our whole background for us. And then if we have uh, things that are on top of our sprites, we can call that the foreground, and we can make a function to draw the foreground. So that way, we don't have to we don't have to have like 30 lines of code for our background right in here. Our draw loop. Our draw function is eventually just going to be a series of smaller functions, really maybe five lines of code in our draw loop um, at the end of the day when we're done with our game. Um, and everything else will be stored in functions that we call within that draw loop. This one changes the, the frame rate to 10, which is about half the normal speed. And then we want the salt shaker to shake up and down. Um, again, it's redrawing the background every time, so that has to be within the function draw. We want to change the y value between 200 and 220, and then we need to draw the, the salt shaker. So this is how we get this to work, to make it look like it's being shaken. Here we're just changing the rotation values of our sprites. So we've got our green one and our pink one. 
So inside of our draw loop, we should be changing their rotation from a negative five to a positive five angle uh, randomly. And then if you notice, our background is now not just made up of black, but it has these little random stars that are being generated. So if you notice there, here's our black background. Here's our random star. Now if you paused it at any moment, there's only one star on the screen. Well, what happens if you want 10 stars each time? Well, I can copy this and I can paste, oops. Control C, Control C, there we go. Down arrow, Control V. So I can put 10 of these now. And now when I run it, you can see that I have 10 stars per frame rate. If you want to speed it up, you can speed this up to 20. They shake faster. If you want 100 stars, it's a lot, but it's doable. Okay, I'm not really going to put 100. You can put a bunch of these random ellipses on there, and now you've got a lot more stars. You could also create a for loop so it draws more stars, and you don't have to do like, you know, 30 lines of code for that. Anyway, kind of fun to star your background. And then finally, this one's. Um, this is your scene and you wanted to um, make some changes to it so it's animated. So I made it so that the ellipse grows and shrinks and then I made it so that the bunny does a little hopping uh, action by changing, randomly changing its Y value. In the sun I randomly give it a, um, a sun size for the width and height um, by creating a variable called sun size and assigning a random number between 50 and 60 to it. So it changes size. Um, I'll show you this a little bit bigger so you can see the whole thing and scroll slowly. That's it.